I'm taking a look at a first aid kit, actually a trauma kit, made by Skedco. It's a SIM pack, and this is uh, issue as far as I know. Um, I bought it from a surplus place at a gun show one time. Taking a look at the outside, it's in the three de three color desert camo. Um, we've got a smaller outside pocket that's uh, retained with Velcro, and then a zippered inside pocket. It's Molly compatible with this uh, proprietary PAL system. It's called the Tac Fit. I think it's a pretty neat one. Uh, it's a quiet, no snaps. And it does have a doubled up piece of nylon here, but no plastic, so it's not a stiff one. So it's a little, it's fairly easy to thread. And I think on a small pouch, that's a big deal because uh, depending on the pouch you're going to put it on, um, you know, what you're going to find is, you know, you don't have a lot of room sometimes. And having the the more flexible straps makes that a little easier to feed sometimes. Um, it basically takes two columns by three rows. This bottom row, obviously I'm not weaving it into a pack here, uh, but this bottom row is black. I would feed it through the pack and like normal and once it's all in, instead of having the plastic thing um, or, or excuse me, instead of having a snap, what we've got is this extra length and that's going to go back up up inside of this black row and it fits just right once it's on there it's folded well and it leaves a smaller um, width of black nylon that's sewn in great um, leaves that sort of dangle in here and as you saw before that allows me to just unlock it and then unthread it. So it is a first aid kit. The way I like to run it is I'll run these just straight down through my pack and then back up to sort of lock it into place without actually weaving it. So just like this actually, if this was the, the three rows on my pack, I would just go behind all three without weaving it into the, to the pouch and then lock it with their lock system. And I do use this pack or this, this uh, trauma kit quite a bit on my chest rigs, but I feel if I've got this on a chest rig, I don't necessarily want to take off my trust, trust rig and lose my ammunition. Um, what I'd rather do is take off the first aid kit. So again, this is just strapped in through the pals, and that does make it a little loose, but I can pull these both down, pull this up out of the pack, or the, excuse me, up out from the chest rig pals, and now they've got a, a trauma, I've got a trauma kit I can offer to someone else to render aid. Now we'll take a look at the inside. My battery's about to go dead, so I'm going to switch the film here. What I really, one of the features I like about the this kit is that the zippers are very overbuilt, super large, which makes them very easy to use on a small pouch like this. The way they covered their zipper to keep the dust and garbage out of it is just to do a flap from one side. And a lot of times you see the flaps from both sides, and I don't know if I have too many that use just the one side, but I really do like it. It just makes it look nice and clean. Uh, most of the time it sits like this, and really you don't see much of anything. Uh, I keep my both of my pulls down here on the one side. This is usually on my left side on a chest rig, and I'm right-handed, so this is on my weak side. The idea being that if I needed to use it from the weak side, I can pull up. And it's a little awkward because it's not attached to my chest rig, but that's a very quick action when it's anchored onto the uh, PALS ladder on the chest rig. Um, because it's completely um, held on the back, it's just very easy to come up and open this and in a one motion, as opposed to having both pulls here where I need two hands to open it. Um, of course, when it's on the left side, it's also quite easy for me to reach over with my strong arm, my, my right hand, and get into there as well. Uh, but before we dig into the middle, I wanted to keep looking at some of the outside features. It has this with uh, one inch Velcro uh, going across here, and that's probably my least favorite thing about it. It does keep this front pocket nice and clean because it's a wide attachment point, and you know it doesn't allow a lot of room for garbage to get in here. And I do tactical matches and stuff with this where I'll roll around on the dirt out here in Arizona not a lot of grass so there's a lot of potential for rocks and garbage and dust and stuff to get in here and it really doesn't uh, even though you know it's potentially could I suppose never really found much dirt inside of there but it's just noisy 
that's the part I don't like. I don't know what I would do to make it better, but since they went to all the trouble of making this quiet, and it's a very quiet pouch, there's no metal, uh, the zippers you'll notice don't have the zipper, or excuse me, the metal pull. They simply have 550. Um, so it's a very quiet pouch until you go to open up the main, the big, the outside pocket there. No matter, um, you know, how easy it is to get out of here, this just makes it a lot easier to get it going. Um, this is an emergency bandage, basically uh, bleeding control. Uh, it's basically a vacuum seal, sterile, um, OD green, uh, non-stick pad, which is used basically to apply pressure and to control bleeding. Um, it's like I mentioned, it's sealed. It's in the green packaging. It, it's a green bandage itself to lend itself to being a bit more camouflaged than a big white bandage, uh, you know, in a fight. Um, it does have an expiration date. It's going to expire in about nine mo uh, six months, according to the to date here. So that means that I'll probably want to change it out. But honestly, I do roll around on this one quite a bit. So I probably should be changing this out a little more often, but I just don't have those kind of funds. So like most people, I'm going to let it run out to the expiration date. Okay, digging inside. Oh, I should mention that I bought this kit as is, and I'm reviewing it as is. I bought this at a gun show. I think it was about 30 bucks, which may be a little pricey. I'm usually pretty cheap, but I looked at it, and I was really impressed with the quality. Um, I didn't mind the contents. A lot of times when you buy a first aid kit um, that's already um, built, you know, the stuff inside may or may not be of quality. It may or may not be the actual stuff that you want to put in there. But for me, the only thing this kit's really missing is a thing, a quick clot, perhaps, and of course a tourniquet. Um, the way I fi figure is um, I can keep a tourniquet in this outside pocket probably. I don't know if that's the wisest thing to do, but that's what I plan on doing. And um, and then on the inside, I'll probably add a, a thing, a quick clot. But getting back to the kit um, as it stands right now, um, it opens up, as I mentioned, I open it with the one zipper pull. And then it's designed to, it, it, it opens completely, but in, in use, what happens is it just doesn't quite open all the way. So it ends up being a lot like those pouches that have the, you know, divide the, the retainer so that it doesn't open all the way. But it ends up opening about like this. And because it's, you know, gravity is usually down, each of the pockets is designed for the pouch to be opened and in this position. Um, touching on the con contents, I've got basically a triangular bandage, but it's in olive drab, um, so a compression bandage they call it. Uh, it's basically a military issue type of piece of triangle fabric, you know, one of the most handy first aid items out there. This is a casualty report or something, and uh, you know, again, if you're on a battlefield with lots of other people, they need to do triage this way that on yourself you have a thing to let people know who you are if you can't speak for yourself. Um, this is uh, another camouflage dressing. It says it's a 4x6 and um, again it's just a compressed uh, sterile uh, bandage again in an OD green color so that um, you know if you're in a fight you don't need to uh, release your location with a big white bandage. Of course everything else in here is all camouflaged and whatnot but they give you a pair of regular yellow or whatever this color is gloves and I never really paid much attention because I don't go into combat. I go to tactical matches and I care less what color my gloves are. But obviously in a tactical situation, I probably swap these out with a black or OD green pair of gloves. Um, another thing I don't like about the kit is that these gloves are just loose here. As a lot of people bring up in our other uh, trauma kit videos, you know, this isn't the most sterile way to keep a pair of gloves. Now, I'm not against having a pair of gloves easy to access, but I'll probably include a set or two that are sealed in plastic in case I do need to work on something that's a little more sensitive where you'd want a set of gloves that are at least clean, if not sterile. So again, back at, looking back at the construction of the pack, the reason I bought it, the reason I probably paid a little bit more than I would normally pay for it, uh, robust zippers, everything is taped on the inside, there's really no exposed um, seams or anything, and it's really bomb proof. It is just a nice pouch. I mean, I didn't do this when I was buying it, but I have no, I have total confidence just, you know, ripping on it now because Really, there's not much short of, uh, you know, cutting it in half with a machete or something that's really going to damage this pouch. Uh, it's Thousand Denner um, Cordura, and you can tell by when you look at it there, the back of it isn't a sheet of, nylon, a sheet of vinyl to, or a vinyl spray to, to create body. It's just literally the, the, the weave of the fabric um, is so strong that it, you know, is a fairly 
non-pliable material almost. So uh, real high quality, uh, good quality in, in, in um, contents. So real, real pleased with this kit. Um, I'm sure that you can get them cheaper than what I paid. And if you're into the three color desert like I am, you know, I don't think you can find a better little pouch like this, you know, depending on how much you find them for at the shows or at the surplus store, you know, it might be worth taking a look at this. It's the uh, Trauma Kit by Skedco.